see. Nice. And now I'm drinking some rye whiskey, Michter's single barrel. We had margaritas from Velvet Cactus, and I'm very mad that I only had one. Oh, yeah. The good news is I completely forgot everything we talked about in the last one. So. <laughs> oh, good. It'll be brand new for some of us. Yeah. Um, so, with that being said, but, um, welcome to oh. the Roof Fitness Podcast. Yeah, it's recording. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bye. I'm going to go take a shower now. Why, why don't you take a shower? <laughs> so... Emily, um, you don't want to sing? Yeah. This is with that being said, COVID-19 edition. I am Bradley Schneller. This is... Sarah Altabello. Awesome. We're here uh, <laughs> for the record. This is the second time we're doing this podcast. Uh, yeah. The first time. Tell, tell the nice people at home what happened <laughs> the first time. Yeah. I, I didn't know how to record on Skype. We're doing this via Skype. And I was recording it. And I thought that if you just hung up, that it would save the recording, but it didn't. So here we are two days later. Well, I am noticing this time, though, that in like the top left hand corner, it's like warning me that you're recording this call. Oh, yeah. That's I true. feel like this is like when I call the bank and they're like, this may be recorded for future reference or whatever. For quality assurance. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, so what's so going on? I just I also want to say before we really dig into this that if you're listening, that's great, but you should pause for just a moment and look at this video on YouTube because you won't be disappointed. Um, what Sarah is referring to is <laughs> I am wearing uh, a kimono. It's a floral kimono. Uh, Ryan, come see. Um, <laughs> So for the record, ready. you won't be ready either. Nice. Hey, I'm drinking <laughs> this though, right? Oh, fancy, fancy. That's not Japanese whiskey. Well, I'm all out of Japanese whiskey, so. We've got, um, and I'm trying to, I've been trying to like drink it sparingly, but we've got some of that, um, uh, what is it? The Basil Hayden's Dark Rye? Ooh, that's good. That's delicious. It's real good. So, um, the reason I'm wearing this or Komodo, <laughs> should I say, is that my daughter uh, took her grubby yogurt hands and wiped it all over my fleece robe that I own, so it smells like spoiled milk. Oh, God. That happened this morning, so... <laughs> Here we are. I just took a shower, so I, I, I uh, yeah, I feel better. You're feeling yourself a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we uh, just finished cooking dinner. Um, I made hamburgers tonight on Kaiser rolls. I don't know if you ever heard of Kaiser roll, but they're delicious. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, so I put the hamburger on that. It was some of that Louisiana Wagyu beef that we got from JB Foods. Yep. So that was delicious. Um, drank a bottle of Chardonnay. That was real nice. I don't know if it's hamburger appropriate, but it was nice outside with the weather. I mean, we're living in the upside down anyway, so drink whatever yeah. wine you want. My son ate a pound and a half of beef tonight, so that was interesting. That's impressive. I, I was pretty impressed. <laughs> uh, he also asked to put lettuce on his hamburger, which I was super jacked about. Nice. Brennan's always been really good about that stuff, though. Yeah, he goes in phases, you know. So today he had kind of a weird poop. Uh, <laughs> and he called me, and, Daddy! Daddy! And I'm like, what, what's up, son? He's like, I need help. I'm like, what's wrong? And he's like, can you help me wipe? And I'm like, it, is it soft or was it runny? Or what's did it the deal? And he goes, it hurt. I'm like, well, you need to eat more vegetables. And so... <laughs> He went and got three celery sticks out of the refrigerator. <laughs> oh, bless his heart. Yeah, so good for him. Nice job, Brennan. So um, I had been advised that okay. we, we should no longer do park workouts. So um, our goal is on Saturday is to start our very first Zoom workout. There's a lot of other around the country that are doing it. 
I've been reluctant to do it um, due to quality control issues, but I figured we'll give it a shot. You know, park work got shut down. It's a good way to connect. We'll see what happens, and then I'll be the test subject, and then roll it out next week if it works real well. Yeah, and I think ultimately, like, it's not. I don't know. It's not the quality of workout we're used to, but I think the thing that I am seeing is starting to happen is people talking, you know, saying, yeah, like I did the workout, but I don't know. I was kind of like, okay, I'm done my double unders. I guess I'll do some squats now. And I think it'll help keep people a little more motivated while they're actually doing it. Yeah, like they'll actually push. They won't take yeah. it. So today, I, correct me if I'm wrong, did I put for time in in it or no? I don't know. You don't have to, I, I don't mean, remember on me. I kind of treated it that way. Yeah, so I did it for time because I know Kevin did this uh, with 225 pounds. What a show and, off. And it took him 24 minutes. I did it yesterday. Yeah. I did it yesterday with the kettlebells. Um, and then today I was doing daddy daycare in the gym. And I decided to do it with a barbell at 165 pounds. And I did it in 13 minutes. So okay. both ways, and I can say this workout, for those of you listening, it is uh, 10 squats, uh, front rack. Um, if you're using a kettlebell or a dumbbell, it's going to be single arm. So you just double the number 20 and then 10 double mm -hmm. unders. And then it goes nine squats or nine per side, 20 double unders, all the way up to 100, all the way down to one. Um, it was infinitely harder with the single rack kettlebell doing like double the squats. Yeah. I didn't even find that that was very challenging. It was just like the last four minutes I was doing nothing but double unders. You go double unders, double unders, double unders, double. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like 70. Oh, my squats are done. Cool. I'll do 80 more double unders. Cool. My squats are done. And then, so my rope has like a coating on the cable and being out on the concrete lately has ripped that coating off. And not only that, but then the wire underneath is starting to fray. So when I mess up, if the rope hits my legs, it like draws blood. Girl, I, I know. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to bring you, I have a, uh, like a treadmill mat that I do double unders on so my rope doesn't get jacked up on the concrete. But I was like, ugh. And it, so I knew. I'm going to bring it to you. It had happened, you programmed a workout last week with 400 double unders in the freaking warm up, which was a joke. And it had happened, it hit like my shin. And today I was super cautious, nothing. Like I hadn't, I made sure to avoid that. I was like, I'm just gonna stop before I mess up. Did you watch the video? I did not today. Okay, so in the video, um, I said that I'm about to do something pretty crazy. <laughs> if anybody notices, please comment. No one commented. But essentially what I did is I did all my double unders barefoot. All right, Glenn. And it worked. I was nervous as hell, but it worked. I, think, I don't know if this, I, I don't think it was the year I was with you. Maybe it was for Beach Ball. We didn't know if we were going to be able to do, like, what the shoe situation might be like. So I remember practicing double unders barefoot. Um, it wasn't so much bad. It just like, after a while, it just sucked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it wasn't hard to do. Um, so how have your workouts been going? Um, they've Let's been good. Um, I was at the park a lot with either by myself or with like um, Brad Nicole, sometimes Keith, like a few other people, which was really good. Um, starting to realize that I think today was the first day I was like, oh yeah, that's just not really gonna happen anymore. And was much less motivated when I was on my own. Um, but in general, my fitness hasn't really stopped. It stopped, it's just kind of shifted gears um, to using what I have, um, but Doing a lot more cardio, wake up every morning and go for a jog. Um, and then sometime in the afternoon, I try to hit the re re remote room workout. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm all over the place. I either do it in the morning or do it in the afternoon. It depends on my situation with the kids. Mm -hmm. um, 
So it's pretty crazy. Today I did it in the afternoon. Yesterday I did it in the morning. Um, so it's, it's all over the place. But today is the first day where I'm like, shit, we still got like maybe two to six more weeks of this. Right. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> and it's not so much like the fear of the unknown. It's like the fear of the monotony. Yeah. yeah. It's it's weird. It's like I really enjoyed being at the gym and not to say like you changed it up a lot, but I liked doing like I made sure to hit certain things every week and um knowing my equipment is so limited. I'm like, yeah, it's the same thing. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I'm just gonna do this for a while. It's weird. It's all very, very strange. I heard someone say this like two weeks ago and I still believe it, but it's like we're living in the upside down. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I mean, I just keep trying to be like, stay fit, you know? I'm not trying to make any gains, obviously, during this. It's just like, stay fit, fit it in. Um, it actually gives me a sense of normalcy working out every day. And, I, and I've kind of gotten into the habit where I can work out every day or I feel the need. Um, I've run out of bark fins, so that's a, that's a plus. <laughs> no more? No more bark fins, and I don't feel like going to Costco, so there won't be any more bark fins. <laughs> so you're working out kind of all over the place, but what has your schedule been like? Yeah, so um, I wake up. Uh, I get about an hour to myself, um, which is like from 6.30 to 7.30, and the kids have been sleeping later, uh, and I, I just, I, you know, I wanted to start reading and doing all this other stuff, but honestly, like that, that first work up, it's like I scroll through Twitter, and I just kind of like chill for a little bit before I can get it together, and then it's like, the kids get up, Emily's still sleeping, and it's boom, breakfast, getting stuff ready to go uh, for the day. And then I will normally work the morning all the way till about noon and then switch with Emily. And Emily will work the entire afternoon and I'm on daddy daycare. So um, Emily says that I get the fun part of the day. <laughs> I'm like, I get six hours with the kids. You get like three and a half. <laughs> Um, but I get nap time and Emily does the schoolwork with the kids. Uh, so I get a lot of the fun play outside, but yeah, yeah. today I did schoolwork and I learned, I, I forgot all about rhombuses and trapezoids and shit like that. That's what we talked about. Acute angles. Can you believe a first grader is, is like learning about acute angles? What? I I don't feel like that was even on my radar. When I, I was remember that in grammar school period. <laughs> No, I remember like my friends and PE and that kind of stuff. I don't remember what I actually learned. Yeah, I'm starting to like worry. Oh, so anyway, so I cook dinner because that's what I do every day is I cook dinner. I clean up. Emily puts the kids to sleep. And then it's like shower, upload the video for the next day, watch an hour of Tiger King, and then back to sleep. <laughs> So, sidebar, you told me to watch that last night, and we still haven't, but we, because Ryan was already in the middle of watching Talented Mr. Ripley, and I forgot how crazy that movie is. I haven't seen that. It's nuts. And I just completely forgot, like, Isn't young like Matt Brad Damon. Pitt or Ewan McGregor in that or something? No, so it's Matt Damon and Matt Jude Damon. Law and Gwyneth Paltrow. Okay. And... Kate, I don't know, one of the Kates is in it. Which one? Blanchette. Blanchette. I was like, I don't know, Hudson. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I don't know, one of the Kates. But it's good. I should yeah. watch it. Yeah, Tiger King's fucking insane. Um, it's like jaw dropped the entire time you're watching it, and you're like, this is real. This is crazy. This shit's real. 
So I haven't seen it, but someone posted an article about it today and I read it and suddenly I was like, oh, this is what all the new memes on the internet are about. Joe <laughs> Exotic. <laughs> yeah, I get it now. Um, so, you know, I talked about my bark thin cravings. How's your nutrition been? Um, I think nutrition has been pretty good. Uh, it's, I mean, we've been eating from home almost every meal, which is great with the exception of the fact that between the two of us, we have to run the dishes almost every night. Right. Um, that's been good. Honestly, I've been really, really conscious of that. Um, there's definitely been times where I want to kind of eat my feelings. And in the sense of like, I used to think about emotional eating. <laughs> you playing with your own? And a nipple yeah. showing. I was like... Are you feeling a little exposed? I felt like, yeah, <laughs> exploited. <laughs> um, I used to think emotional eating was just like happy and sad, but for me, it's when I'm bored. And obviously, there's a lot more downtime in life these days. So I've just been really conscious of that. And something that helped was, I don't know if Emily told me this or I read it through Precision that they were talking about at some point, like potentially as a nutrition coach, you could give your client a pair of Google glasses and see kind of what it's like from their perspective when they're eating. Um, if it's fast, if they are going to the cabinet a bunch of times or they keep opening the fridge and that would be me. Like I am someone when I'm bored, I will get up and I will like look in the pantry. I'll rummage around. I won't get anything. I'll sit down. I'll get back up. I'll go to the pantry and look around some more until I finally figured something out. Um, yeah, I vaguely remember telling this story two nights ago, but I was I was drinking beer and I didn't even want the beer, but the beer seemed easier than filling up my water because the water in my fridge, you have to go inside the fridge and it takes <laughs> fucking ever. And it, it's like, it's like at the end of a pee. <laughs> into the bottle and I'm like this is no good it's just easier if I drink a beer so I save about a minute drink a beer or a Waterloo but I can't continue to drink a water if I drink like three Waterloos in a day then I get up every hour at night to take a piss because yeah. I don't know if it's the gas or something <laughs> in the water but it just makes me pee more than drinking flat water it's really bizarre yeah so how, I mean, that's my story. And I think like my nutrition clients, there was never really any fall off. Like our check-ins have continued really regularly. And that has helped kind of keep my own nutrition in check. Um, how's yours been? I mean, clearly you're out of bark thins. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm in maintenance. Does yeah. That make sense? Like I'm not um I'm having a hard time trying to get beach ready. Uh <laughs> like I, aren't we all? Right. Like I just I don't have the energy to maybe do a macro count or um even fight myself when I'm like, I think there's a piece of eighty five percent dark chocolate in the pantry, I'll have that now. You know, like I, I just don't have the the energy to fight that right now and yeah. i know i need to because if i get in the zone i'll be in the zone for a few days but i mean even today like i felt really good um all day i felt pretty strong and then like it just hit me that i was exhausted of doing the same shit every single day and so i'm like i need to drink a bottle of wine while i cook and then it's like, okay, well, let me hit this up. And then it's like, oh, well, I'm doing the podcast with Sarah. Perfect time to drink a little whiskey. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like that, you know. Um, I'm not doing anything crazy, nothing egregious, you know. I'm not overeating any one, two, you know, one or two things. I'm just not, like, working on my summer sexy. Yeah, I have referred to this a lot in the past, but I feel like we're all kind of in a position of just like, don't eat like a total asshole. Like, right. it's kind yeah. of where we're at. Yeah, that's that's where I am. Um, so I'm just trying to feel pretty in other ways. You know, I, I'm, I'm not sure 
what I'm going to do about my hair. Like, as you can see, it's getting kind of crazy. So I see this. I want to bring up one of the first things you mentioned two days ago was that you were at a, at a, you were about to pivot. Potentially, you were either going to shave the facial hair or full on go for it. And it looks like you were going for it. Talk to me about this. So the answer to that is I'm going because I ripped out the clippers this morning and shaved the neck, which which means that this is that all you're in it. like Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> if I got the clippers out, shaved the neck, but didn't shave the beard, then that means I'm in it to win it. It's true. <laughs> uh, I was wondering. I was wondering when we tuned in today what that situation was going to be like, and then I got really distracted by the kimono situation and forgot about the facial hair until just now. What this? This is called my taco meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. I just, you know, I've had people in the past say like, "Why don't you shave your chest?" And I'm like, "Nah, I don't want to." Like, I like. I'm a hairy chest guy. Is that Emily behind me? Or is it my dog? It's Chickory. She does this thing now in her older years where she's like... <laughs> it's pretty annoying. But I love it still. Mine just sounds like a lawnmower. Lawnmower? Like Ryan was gone for part of the day and he was going to get his like set up from work so now our entire dining room table is like his home office and we like open the windows or open the blinds and I guess there's just like a lot of activity outside and she wasn't barking it was just like yeah for like a solid five minutes I feel that I feel it's that. interesting to see how your animals act when you're home all day every day Sicker reacts the same. She gets off the sofa. <laughs> she sniffs around for leftover food somewhere that the kids have dropped. She, she gets, gets back, back on the sofa. the sofa. She has one of these. <laughs> she gets off the sofa. She moans to go take a piss. She comes back in. She gets back on the sofa. And that's the day. There over you go. And over again. Um, so, any lessons that you've learned so far through two weeks of quarantine? Um, I, we had kind of touched on this a couple days ago, but I just kind of had this realization that I, I think it was on the forefront of my mind because, um, the other day made four years for me since I joined Rue. Happy Rue-versary. And I was like, my Rue-versary, thinking that like, I would not have handled any of this nearly as well if this had happened like five years ago, if I didn't have this community and the personal growth that I have had over the last four years. Um, I don't know, just in general, I feel very grateful. Um, I feel like honestly, I'm in the best, not that there's like an optimal time for this to happen in your life. Um, but I feel very fortunate to be in the situation I am in and that we are in. Um, we don't have kids. We don't own our home. Ryan's job, it, he's, everything's normal for him. He's just working from home. You know, I have a lot to be grateful for. So yeah, no, that's good. Um, <clears throat> it is a weird time. Uh, and I'm thankful too for like my support system and, and thankful for the Rue community um, because I, I couldn't imagine what it would be like if I didn't wake up to the Marco Polos, all the like video yeah. snippets of everybody, even if I, you know, it was kind of in a funk and wasn't participating or the comments of people doing their workouts or posting in the group, you know, those types of things. So, um, it's interesting. So uh, I, I'm thankful for all those people. Uh, I'm thankful to like go on a drive. <laughs> yeah. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but just going to drive and drive around or, or go on a walk. I'm thankful for the weather. Um, if the weather, like it hasn't rained in 14 days, I feel like. <laughs> no. <laughs> Even when it was supposed to, like last weekend, we were supposed to have a super gross day and that never happened. 
And according to my weather app, it's not supposed to rain anytime soon. So that's thankful. Um, yeah. So what's next for you? Um, I think just keeping on, keeping on from kind of a Rue perspective, keep pushing with my nutrition clients, keep just kind of maintaining with food and working out. Personally, I think these will help me in other ways, just now that I do have the time, trying to make time for doing the things that fill me up. So like I'm trying to do something a few times a week that is creative and I'm using my hands and my brain, um, meditating a lot. So just, yeah, I think for me right now, it's just using the time I have to just kind of work on myself and be the best person I can. And like, it, it's hard because I want to do more to help those around me, but that's the really crappy thing about this situation. Like, yeah, there's talk, only I, things you can do from afar. I talked to my parents today. We were FaceTiming with them, and, and my dad was, like, sad because he can't help anyone do anything. Yeah. I wanted to be like, well, hey, man, like, I'll go inside. You can come over and mulch my garden. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay 10 feet away. But I didn't say anything. <laughs> I wanted to say that, like, you could come over and mulch my garden. <laughs> yeah, and it, it what's also really weird is, like, even the things I'm doing for my parents, like, bringing them groceries, I'm still like, ooh, make sure you clean those. Like, I, it's still not. Right. It doesn't, like, feel good because there's still, like, such a level of concern. So I don't want to ask you what the highlight of your day is, but do you have like an, maybe like an underrated highlight? Like, it's not like if I said, hey, what's the highlight of your day? You're going to this, but it's something that happens in your day that's un maybe not unexpected, but like low key makes you happy. Um, <laughs> Ryan just. Mumber, mumbered, mumbled under his breath. Remember your husband sitting right here. Um, <laughs> um, something that I've been really enjoying on my own, and it's not every day, but when I do meditate, like I would say, like a good 60, 70% of the time, I hit this moment where. I don't know how to describe it. I'm just like weightlessness. Oh, and for someone that has really bad anxiety, I get so much out of that moment and it clears my head so much. Um, and it makes me feel like really prepared to handle whatever is next. Um, so that has been something that I like really look forward to and enjoy a lot. What about you? Yeah. So mine is, is vastly different. Um, <laughs> Uh, Vivian doesn't eat the crust of her toast. Yeah. <laughs> and it's Dave's killer bread, good seed, and I feel like we're in a quarantine, so I don't want to waste the crust. So <laughs> I eat all the, the ends of her toast, and they're like buttered, and the butter's been sitting there for a while, um, and it's delicious. So uh, today, Brennan didn't eat his crust either, so I got double crust. Um, <laughs> And I really like that. <laughs> well, I will say from like, uh, just like day to day kind of thing, I have been really loving like cooking breakfast every single morning. And it's yeah, the thing, but it's really satisfying to like sit down and relax. And even though usually by the time like the coffee is made, Ryan has started working, um, and he skips breakfast a lot. So like I'll be eating breakfast, he starts working, but just having that like mug of coffee at home and unrushed is really satisfying. Yeah, I go outside and drink it and I, I do enjoy that a lot. So yeah, um, it's the little things. Huh? It's the little things. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I even though like I'm super busy with my days and Emily's super busy with my days, uh 
I kind of push back my mornings to give myself two hours in the morning where I can kind of let the day unfold and I'm not mm -hmm. like rushing into the day, which has been really nice. Yeah. So. I'm hoping that when all of the dust settles and all of this is said and done that um, us as like a collective whole remember some of these things and make more time to slow down a little bit. What is that? <laughs> yes, slowing down. So I was doing uh, a workout video just before we got on this Skype call and um, I needed something that wasn't as heavy as my kettlebell. Yeah. <laughs> so I went and got a book for like some spend presses and I happened to get this book and I noticed it a little bit through the podcast what it was. So for those of you listening, it is the Kama Sutra. Nice. Let's just open up a random page and show it. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> Here comes Ryan. There you go. That's a really tame page for you to open up to. There's nothing sexual. Let's flip again. Oh! <laughs> there we go. That's more like it. <laughs> I don't remember, but it was that like... Whole time. It was like my maybe 18th birthday. I want to say one of my best friends just like gave it to me and thought it was hysterical that I opened this gift in front of my parents. I was like, oh, thanks. I'll keep that one in the bag. I love it. I, I've read it. It's interesting. Um, it didn't make me any more enlightened. <laughs> right? <laughs> but it's interesting for sure. So... All right. Uh, next week, y'all, we'll have a real podcast with topics. <laughs> this one was us getting through um, just to give you all some insight into how we're operating on a daily basis. Uh, for the record, um, this was fun. It, it wasn't as good as the one two nights ago. <laughs> the one two nights ago was more informational. This one, you get a, you get a better look into our life. So. Yeah, this was more, um, <clears throat> it was, this one was more like drunk history. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The one before was more informational. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, all right, y'all, stay safe out there. Um, thanks for listening. Make sure to rate and sub sub subscribe on iTunes. And Bradley, make sure to stop recording before you hey, end the Hey, don't hang up. Okay. I'm going to hit I'll stop. Wait. I'll wait for you. All right. Bye, y'all. Peace. Bye.